Amen. We thank Amen. our brother Sammy so much for the powerful opening and also very grateful to uh, Sister Rita for that brief moment of praise. And I thank God for your lives. For even those who are yet to join us. It's, it's, it's quite funny. Today I told the church where I went to have a revival with at Pukiasi. Those of you who have, have followed me on YouTube and Facebook, you, you would have seen that Friday we were having a revival in the evening on the topic Altar on Fire. That was the first part. And today we're going to finish the second part. And wow, I wish all of you were there. There was so much fire. There was so much unction. We thank God. I'll share the video. Brother Chris was with me and he will convert. I'll share it probably tonight or tomorrow, God willing, whenever he's ready. He's a busy person. But you know, I want to assure you that whatever we are learning from here, please take it with a very good heart and don't just listen, study. Because the issues we are discussing are very sensitive. Who remembers what we did on uh, a week today? Who remembers the topic we deliberated on last week, Sunday, around this time? The Great Covenant. Thank you, madam. We looked at covenant. And then this Friday, I went to talk about altar on fire, chapter uh, part one. And today, altar on fire, part two. And the topics are so sensitive. The devil doesn't want us to be touching on these issues where God's children will know who they are, to know their covenant, to keep their altars on fire, for it to burn perpetually so that you will not have any say in their lives. So Sunday, after you all left, I was closing my laptop. It was refusing to close. Then suddenly I saw the screen cracking from one end to the other. <laughs> and uh, it's quite a, a new product in the market. So I can't even get the screen here. We call some big stores. And I can't even get the screen around. So. <laughs> I'll see, but at least it's been fixed. The touch is not working, but at least it's working. And I don't know when it will collapse, but for now. But you see, just last night, I I, I finished preparing, um, finding scriptures on today's topic, Altar on Fire, chapter, uh, part two. Before I finished, my main phone went off and the phone never came back again until just a few minutes ago. That's why I couldn't send you people the reminders uh, until 10 minutes ago. Okay, until 10 minutes to eight in Ghana because my WhatsApp was not working on that phone and the other one doesn't have the cell broadcast. But you see, all these things shouldn't put any fear of the devil in us. He knows so well that we are touching on very pertinent issues where God's children's eyes need to be open to certain things so, they are, they are, so that their walk with God will be strengthened. And once that is strengthened, it becomes difficult for the devil to penetrate. 
And so I'm not, I'm not perturbed. I'm not afraid and I'm not worried about laptop and phone or whatever. As long as we have our life, our life, we commit ourselves to study, we will, we will, we will do as the Bible instructs us and we shall prevail because the God that we serve has never tasted defeats. And so we will not be defeated. Amen. 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 So I'm only telling you this for you to understand some of the subtle attacks that come our way. Because it's unthinkable. The laptop was on my lap like I do every time. Then just after service, it's not closing and then it, 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 it begins to break. A phone is just lying by my side after preparing the message and it goes off. But <laughs> we know that God we said, please, when you get that message, when you get that message, altar on fire, chapter two, please listen to it. Please listen to it. I, I, was, I was listening to it, but I had to pause after this session, I'll go back and finish. I have a few minutes, about 20 minutes more to go. And just follow the manifestation of the Holy Spirit after the message. God has a purpose for us. He has a word for us. And we don't need to relent. Let's walk with him and love him unconditionally. But tonight, I want us to come to that very important topic dear to my heart the issue of salvation and specifically that issue of once saved forever saved we need to really go into that topic okay but um let me pause here Juanita Uh, yes, I'm here. Can you please alert your sisters in Worcester? I think oh, I have okay. changed the time in the message. I just realized it, but it was late. I need to change it from hence. So please alert them we are here. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay. So, um, brothers and sisters, um, I want someone to take us to Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. We are looking at that phenomenon of one seed forever seed. It is never true. It is never true. But let's see and flow with what the Bible says. Philippians 2, 12. Who's taking us there? Philippians, Philippians two, two. two. Well, yeah. Philippians. Two. Sammy, please read. Okay, Philippians two verse twelve. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my ab absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. So this is what the Apostle Paul, and I'm happy the other time Chris was leading this um, topic of salvation, he emphasized on that scripture. Paul was telling the people around him in the Philippines, that it is not just that he is there. It is not only when he is in their midst that they should conform with what the Bible says, with the statutes of the Lord, 
for the laws and principles guiding Christianity. But even in its absence, they should behave in the same manner and same fashion. So it's quite surprising. I think today I was telling the church on Friday, I've forgotten that when you are a Pentecostal, because Pentecostals believe in the speaking of tongues so much, people have, have that notion that once you can speak in tongues, no matter what you do, you are saved. If you belong to the Orthodox, you know, they have a way of keeping themselves holy, going to church on time and uh, going through certain rituals in church. Uh, pastor will say something, they will say after him and all those things. People think when you conform to those rituals, it is okay. The charismatics, if you can blow your tongues and make your pastor feel uh, that important, you know, for them, some of them have missed it. They have, they have, they have idolized their pastors. And they think once you, you can please your pastor, uh, it is okay. There are some churches that if you can pay, your tithe is up to a certain point and you can support the church. They don't care about what you do. So you see, what I'm saying is that all these things have come to camouflage uh, the, 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 the essence of our, of our spirituality. So we have become people who believe in religion instead of spirituality. We have exchanged our spirituality, our heart conforming with the things of God with, with, with rituals, with money, with certain things. And that's why you can go to church and have a lady whose ties are showing and, and leading worship and people feel it is cool. You have a gentleman in the church who is playing a very important role and sleeping with every girl around in the church and we think it is cool. But what is Paul saying here? Paul is advising that we shouldn't behave as Christians only because he's around, but even in his absence. You cannot be a Christian in public and another person when you are alone. You cannot be a Christian in the church and another person in your home or at the office or at another place. And so there are so many things that we think is cool. I'm sorry. who had attained so-called stardom collaboration with any any gospel musician in the country they are not popular they are not blah 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 so she felt that yes if you have We'll go and bring a comedian or a
Also, you made me the host. And shall say young quantity of one soap. Or so for country or say one seed forever save that. For our Bible, for our tithes, for we be a new friend and I say in tem 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 tem. Because these people, these men and women of God, they have signed a pact with the enemy and they want people to go with them in, uh, to hell. But please don't be one of them. You can't be going to church, driving in winter, driving in autumn, driving in summer, day, night, praying, and end in hell. You cannot bear it. Please, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, Sami, are you here or you are gone? Sami's network is not helping. Okay, somebody please read Romans 6.23. Romans six twenty three. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hey, who be on the Bible? Hello. Amen. Hello. Thank you. Of what, Sammy? Sammy, are you there? The, yes. Mm -hmm. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ Jesus. You see, I like the way the Bible puts it. The wages of sin is death. So if you repent, and you go back to sin. That is the first death. That is the spiritual death. Indeed, I don't see why the Bible is so explicit like this. And somebody will be bold enough to tell me that sin. Now you see where they are, apart from the, 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 that uh, preaching of one saved, forever saved, another dimension they have taken is that sin cannot take you to hell. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he, he, he took all our sins. So in essence, what they are saying is that there's no more sin in the world after the death of Jesus. That is how serious the matter has become. That Jesus took every sin. So why is it that Jesus took every sin, nailed it on the cross, and you are coming to tell me I am a sinner? And if that is what we are saying, then the work of Jesus is not true. These are men of, and women of God, some highly educated, some highly influential in clericals, some commanding churches with thousands of people. And that's how they have deceived the world. But it is written. This is not one of my books. This is not one.
no documented trial Network that I've abandoned is now working. <laughs> My empty and table net that I stopped using because it's so slow. This is, is at least working on this phone. So we can continue. Okay, the other one is also back. Okay, so let me mute this.
What I'm saying here, sex at all, often, that even those ones, as soon as it comes to your attention, please make sure you go on your knees and ask for forgiveness. Because when the trumpet, trumpet sounds, or when God calls you home, there will be no excuses. And what we need to understand is that when we stand before the throne, it's not going to be a, a give and take like we see in the courtroom where you have the opportunity to bring lawyers to defend. And sometimes you can skew things in your favor. At that point, within a glimpse, you see everything you have done with your life. Within a twinkle of an eye, you will see everything that has gone on in your mind. And by the time you finish, you find your way, whether you belong to heaven or you belong to hell. So sometimes when we hear the judgment seat, I think some of us think that, oh, I will stand before God and tell him I did A, B, C, D. There's no time for that. And at that time, mercy will be no more. Mercy will be no more. Grace will be no more. The only thing that will work is justice. And God is a God of justice. So at that point, if you judge yourself and you are innocent, you'll be welcome to have. So please, let's not be deceived. There's nothing like one. There were times that when you go to a church, you'll be taken through scripture. You'll be taken and take a position, whether you are ready to walk with Christ or you want to live your old life. When you are convinced that now I want to change my ways, I want to work well, work with Christ. That is where you'll be made to recite the sinner's prayer and confess Christ. That is where you'll be baptized into a new being. But because now churches are following crowds, as they will come, want you to leave. The first day you come, they want to get hold of you. Not your soul, but you. So the first day, without even questioning you, whether you, are, you know Christ or not, they invite you to the pulpit, lift your hands. A free man, right from the side and baptized. And so many people have been baptized the same way they came into church and they think, oh, if this is the way I went. They made me recite the sinner's prayer and baptize me. Then it means what I'm doing is these people may never know Christian, but because some way somehow baptize you, they think it is okay. It's, if they have a bad lifestyle, on the word without touching on their minds, without having an impact on their lifestyles. That was And so for certain people, forever save works. You have seen how serious we are, where salvation is so important. That you have heard about it. Oh. 
and over over. हेलो ठीक हेलो 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 इज Yes, somebody read for us. Is it that nobody is having a Bible or you don't hear me? Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Mm -hmm. The soul who sin shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Amen. Should I repeat it? I mean, you are. Should I repeat it? Again? Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. The soul who yes, sins... Yes, you have muted, Sammy. Yes. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Amen. 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 I'm not sure if it is my I'm not sure if it is my When we And is not good. You're, you're, can you hear me, please? Uh, Hello? Yes. Yes, I can hear you now. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Were you saying something, Angie? I was asking if I. You want to read another version? Go ahead. Okay. Um, it says the person Ezekiel chapter 
18 verses 20. The person yes. who sinned is the one who will die. The child will not be punished for their parents' sins. And the parents will not be punished for their child's sins. Righteous people will be rewarded for their own righteous behavior. And wicked people will be punished for their own wickedness. Thank you. Please, I believe it's um, 20. Only 20. Yes, please. Okay. Amen. 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 Now the Amen. other one. Okay. So that is so clear. And that's why we cannot continue to stay in sin and think that uh, all is well, all is not well. So I was explaining with the Romans that whenever we sin, what happened and we don't repent, we die the first death, the spiritual death. We get disconnected from the Holy Spirit, from the presence of God. And that is very dangerous. That is what happened to Adam and Eve and they lost that privilege in the garden of Eden. And so we should understand. And I explained that your pastor, your teacher, whoever cannot work on your salvation for you. It is only leading you to Christ. And so uh, when the Bible says that, and so uh, when the Bible says that, Remember where you fell. Remember where you fell and remember that time by the soul that runs to God shall receive eternity. Let me end with this scripture so we can we can continue 
another time. Um, let's go to John chapter five, verse four. John chapter five, verse fourteen. Is anybody there? John chapter five, verse fourteen. Yes. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, "See, you have been made well." Say no more, lest a Western come upon you. Amen. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, we need to understand. After Jesus had healed somebody, somebody that people suspected, they asked Jesus, is he suffering from this sickness because of his parents, his mother's or his father's sins or his own sins? Whatever it was, Jesus healed him. And when he found him again, he told him he was emphatic that do not sin again. Because when you sin, things that are more dangerous, things that you may not be able to carry will come upon you. And it is clear in the Bible that when a demon leaves any person, demons do not die. Evil spirits do not die. They go to the desert and search for a place. If they don't find a place, they will come back. And if they come back and you have left the presence of the Holy Spirit and they see that you are weakened, now it is not only that force that will come. They come with stronger forces to occupy you. So my question is that, how can we repent and go back to sin and think that it is okay because we were saved yesterday? So no matter what we do today, we are saved. No matter what we do tomorrow, we are saved. He says himself said, Go and sin no more. Because if you sin, what is going to come to you is more dangerous than what I saved you from, than what I delivered you from. And so in ending, brothers and sisters, please take this from me and take it as the word of God that once saved, forever, forever saved, is a big lie. It is one of the biggest deceptions in Christianity. It is a ploy to make Christianity so simple, so easy, so that a lot of people will still be in the church and feel that no matter what they do, heaven is their portion. And so they will stay in the church and do whatever they do, contrary to what God wants us to do, and in the end, perish in hell. But I pray this night that by the mercies of God, you always remember where God picked you from. You always remember that in 1 Peter 2.9, you are a holy nation consecrated for God a royal priesthood, and therefore doing uh, what does not please the Lord should be more difficult for you to do than what pleases him. Thank you so much. I'll open the, the platform for just five minutes to take inputs or questions. If you have the mic, please be as snappy as possible. I'm really exhausted. And I want us to end on time so that we can continue God willing next week if the Holy Spirit does not change the course of this discussion. So I'll pause here. 
for any question or any contribution, but please be very snappy. Thank you so much. If you're on Facebook, you can type your question or your suggestion or input. Is anybody here? Is there somebody who wants to say anything? Does everybody hear me, please? Hey, it looks like I'm alone. No, please, we are here. Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. And I'm not connecting on what that new contribution. I see. I thought that was alone. Thank you. This is a very important topic, and nobody has anything to do. Okay. No question. Chris, you started this topic with us. Is there anything you want to say? Chris. Uncle Chris. Boss. You started this topic with us. Is there anything you want to say or ask? Um, not at the moment, boss. Okay. I have a question, myself. Go ahead, my man. I have a question about this uh, saying and the scripture where it says, uh, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Uh, let's say you, let's say you meet someone and then you try to uh, say the word of God, share uh, witness, you are doing witnessing. And then I'm on the phone, please. So you meet someone, then you share the word of God with the person, and then the person surrenders to, uh, to God, raises hand, and then confesses. And then the person has not been baptized. You know how after someone raises his hands up and then uh, surrender to God, we, we gather all of them, like us in the Church of Pentecost, and then we take them to, uh, for baptism, and then we pray for the Holy Spirit uh baptism of the holy spirit so when you meet someone outside and then the person surrenders and then confesses the sin and then the person has not been baptized and the person of the holy spirit and then of water and then the person passes on like the person dies mm -hmm. does the person goes to to the enter the kingdom of god mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. 
Please, was my question clear? Uh, oh, I should type it instead. Ah. Hello. 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 Hi. Yeah, that 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 machine will not work. Okay, what I'm saying is that when we when we we come to Christ through conviction of the Holy Spirit, and we genuinely come to Him, the first baptism that we get is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, if... Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry, I tried connecting. Hello. With what I'm saying is that Hi. when somebody accepts Christ and passes on before without being immersed in water, um, that does not in any way prevent the person from going to heaven. Because we first get the baptism of the Holy Spirit before any other baptism comes. So that shouldn't be, um, hold please. Okay, that shouldn't be the only passport to heaven. Nonetheless, when we come to Christ and we have the opportunity, we should avail ourselves to be baptized because it is a requirement, but it is not so much so that you meet somebody today. What about, you know, some people accept Christ just on the verge of dying, but they genuinely accept him. Does it mean such people will not go to heaven? So these are requirements. But you see, from the scripture you were reading, the water and the spirit, the water actually stands for, uh, what do you call it? Life. And life is the word of God. So it is not the literally water that we drink or use to uh, baptize. Today, I share that in, in, in my teaching while we're looking at altar on fire, where um, Elijah commanded, not commanded, directed that they should soak the offering with four barrels of water three times. The water only signifies the word of God, which is life. So what it means is that when we repent, the word of God should be be in us and we should believe him through our deed and with our heart that is the spirit and the and 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 and, and the word so rita please if you have people who have repented let's encourage them to be baptized but if people should pass on that will not really prevent them thank you so much and i hope you are answered Okay, can we take the last one and um, close a question or a contribution to this important topic, once saved, forever saved? Uh, 
Hey, ta bước ra vô. Ta bước ra nhà mô đen tù bia ngà sao hông? Hello? Ông ta bước ra nhà đẹp bà. Okay. Okay. Any questions? We need a contribution. So, how do we judge? I'm a teacher. If I don't get feedback, uh, it tells me. And people have been quiet. Hello, buddy. I'm in buddy. More buddy. So, really, are they all here? Or they connected and then put the phone somewhere? Anyways, so if we are okay, as we say, we'll pray. I'm, I'm, I'm quite exhausted. We'll pray and close. And today, whatever you have heard, it should help you to put it to so you can work on your salvation day and night. You for yourself. You for yourself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, I am that I am. Thank you for your word. 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 Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this remembrance. Thank you, Father. That tonight you so many give us this revelation. We are chosen. Chosen generation. We are royal. Bless you, Holy Name. For your fire. Thank you. 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 You thank you for your word. You thank you for your love. You thank you for the peace that we enjoy. You thank you for using your word um, to bring us back to you for the forgiveness of things. We appreciate it. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to make that solemn pledge to God. Help me, help me, that from me. tonight you not breach your part of the covenant again. Help me to breach my part of the covenant. Again. If it's Amazing. calling Amazing. and giftings are not Amazing. without Amazing. repentance, Amazing. then tell him that you are not going me. back. Help me to keep my when he called seventy-two, help me not to breach and my only twelve came, over. and he asked them, "Are you help also living?" Peter me said, me "Where are we going, Father?" We have nowhere to go. We follow you. Actions direct my That's strength. what I want you to do. Like Peter, tell him we have nowhere to go. Help me. We will stick with you till you call us back home. Help me, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help us, 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 Lord. Help us to lead. Father, let thy covenant keep By your word. in the mind of God and covenant in my with us. Keep your word, O oh God. We are not leaving. Father, we are not leaving. My heart, oh we are not going back to the world. Let your word, O oh God, ring, O oh God, in my back heart. To the world. We are not going back to the world. We are sticking with you no matter me, what happens to us, no matter what we go through, no matter the situation, the circumstance. We are sticking to you, O oh Lord. We are sticking to you. So help us, Lord, help us, help us, help our faith, help us. 
Holy Spirit wants you to be our companion. Stick with you. Mm. Now, as we depart from here, commit yourself commit your household, commit the week ahead into the hands of God. Commit everything about you. Christmas is coming and the devil is busy looking for blood, looking for people to sacrifice on their altars. But pray for God to increase his protection over you, your household, and everything about you. And enable you to cross over to the year ahead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Commit our entire being, our household, our ministries. We commit, O oh Lord, our careers, our neighborhood, the nations, the church, into your hands. That you make us fruitful, that you give us joy, that you bless us and increase us, that you protect us, that you deliver us from the works of the enemy, that you, O oh Lord, Will be with us in the remaining days and weeks of November that you usher us into December and into 2023. Father, continue to be our God. Speak to us. Reveal to us things hidden in the secret places. Empower us and enable us to do your work, to win souls for you as we work on our own salvation with fear and trembling. Father, we bless your holy name and we glorify you, knowing that you have done it already and your hand is upon us and that you have kept us under your wings, where there is safety, where there is joy, where there is peace. Father, protect our going out and our coming back in the week ahead. Let everything that we touch, we touch prosper. Increase us in all dimensions and thou us with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment. And Father, help us to feed from your heavenly economy as the world economy keeps crumbling. We count on you. We count on your provisions. We count on your providence. We count on your protection. And we know and we declare and we decree that we shall meet here again a week from now and testify of your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Let us share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord. So good people, God bless you all so much for coming. It's been quite an exhausting day, ministry in the morning, doing some visitations. I came home just about two hours ago. So I'm now feeling it. I'm now feeling the fatigue. So let's all have a blessed, very blessed week and uh, talk as and when time uh, enables us. God bless us all. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 That you take absolute control of our meeting. That you speak through yourself and deliver unto us. Your word unadulterated, your word that gives life. Father, we know no other God except you. That's why we always run to you. Tonight, give us deeper understanding. Give us wisdom, even as we share. And help us to receive your word in faith. So we benefit from it. Thank you, Father. My answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have to pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So tonight we are continuing with a session on salvation, specifically, we want to understand, we want to appreciate that salvation is a second by second assignment. And so through these studies, we are diffusing the philosophy of one saved forever saved. It cannot be true. If it were, then entrance to heaven will be just a way of standing in front of people at church, raising your hand, your hand and saying, today I accept Christ and my, as my savior and Lord. Mm. After that, you don't need to do any other thing. You can live the life that you used to live and go to heaven. But that is a big fallacy. Working to assess heaven is a big time Assignment is a task that not everybody can pursue. And so we have to take it very seriously that with all the struggles we are going through, with all the persecution, with all the missiles being thrown by the fiery that's being thrown by the enemy, day in, day out, we shall not miss our mark. And so before I start, I want some of you to remind us of how far we went last week. In just 30 seconds, you tell us what you remember about our discussion last Sunday, and then we continue from there. I did not bring my laptop charger, so I will not be here for too long. As the battery warns me, I have to, and I also have to leave the family so they can have their peaceful rest. I just came to step them. Okay. So lessons from last week. Anyone at all who was here with us?
yeah last week ended on a silent note like this when i asked for questions people were silent today we are trying to refresh ourselves and move on from here so if nobody remembers nothing from last week's studies then it will be a fruitless journey to continue with the same topic so i would appreciate a word or two from some of us it's the same topic one seed forever seed we're doing yeah amen amen Mama Rita. yeah i remember we we talked about we spoke about uh philippians 2 12 when um you talk about that we should work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. That is excellent. Thank you so much. Another person. Almost all of us were here last week, almost. So if only one person remembers one scripture, then we are in trouble. Samia, so, if you were reading the scriptures for us, Chris, you started this, um, this, this, this um, discussions about a month ago. So let's hear from you. Uncle Chris. Hmm. Sammy. Chris and Sammy are here, but they are not here. Okay, okay who else? Mamelina, any lesson from last week? Tell me, friend. Isinam, were you here with us last yes. week? Oh, I did. Okay, I didn't know. Okay, yes. Yeah, what I remembered was, um, he said any pastor that tells us that we are saved so we don't have to work on our salvation it's a liar they just want to drive us to hell with them so every day we have to work on our righteousness and being in good standing with god mm. thank you that's excellent thank you so much Esina. okay the last person and we move on Mr. Juanita. Okay, someone wants to speak now. Yes, I mean. Yes, I remember also when Jesus healed someone and he told the person that uh, they should go and sin no more. Otherwise, worse than that will come over his life, which tells us that we should continue to work towards our salvation. It is not something that happens once, but it's something that should be continuous day in and day out we should make all efforts to work out our salvation amen and i believe by now we all believe in these things that we are learning because if we are still confused and operating by that fallacy then we are in trouble because um, darkness and light cannot dwell together. As soon as there is light, darkness has. It has to be dispelled. Yeah. And so let's be wary. About a month ago, so I've been observing her. And I asked her if she knows over her life she said no she doesn't know nobody has told her 
I said, yeah, that's what the Spirit of the Lord has been telling me. But she doesn't know because of lifestyle. So she needs to change certain things about her, herself, and then the Holy Spirit will start ministering to her. I had to, she's not a friend or anything, but I had to walk her through and I told her we are going to have a more detailed discussion later on. Oh, okay. What it means is that if you don't work on certain aspects of your life, the Holy Spirit cannot dwell with you and you lose your salvation. You lose eternity. And that's why it's so important that we work on it on a second by second basis. And also knowing that if we have been delivered of any forces, any spirits, any demons, any attacks, if we don't operate under the Holy Spirit, these forces will go. They don't die, as Jesus told the man in John 5, 14. They'll go to the desert. By the time they come, you'll be a final person. And they will come with seven stinking and they fall into serious addiction. And so we need to really work on our salvation. But I'll continue from here. Uh, Sister Ruby. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Prof. Hello, Prof, please can you hear me? Sister Ruby, please take. Yeah, where is your sister? Uh, she's not I, here. She's not here. Oh, okay. Let me, I'll okay. check on her. Yes, please. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. So, somebody please take us to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Is somebody there? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse. Verses 17 and 18. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 and, and 18. 18. Yes, please. I'm reading from the revised standard version. It says, okay. therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, brethren, this is what it is. That once we come to Christ, once we confess <clears throat> that we are no more going back to our sins, once we confess that through the ministry of reconciliation, that is through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, we have come to Christ. We are a new creation. And mind you, we are not that we will vomit and go back to our vomit. We are not dogs that we will vomit and go back to eat what we have vomited. Paul says, after encountering the Spirit of God, I never heeded to flesh and blood. He says that now I have left the old things behind me and my focus is on what lies ahead, not what is behind me. So it is very shameful for a Christian 
to think I have come to Christ. I am a new being and still be doubling in the things that we used to do. Then, if that is what it is, then there was no need to come to Christ at all. If you were lying, if you were stealing, if you were gossiping, if you were full of strife and envy, if you were fornicating, if you were an idol worshiper, and you claim you have come to Christ, you have left all those things with the world, and through the reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation, you have come to Christ. So it is ununderstandable to say you have assumed a new being, yet you still do the former things. If it were so, then I will encourage you don't waste your time to tell the world you are a new being. Please stay where you are. Because in, 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 in Revelation, it is so clear that if you be hot, be hot. If you be cold, be cold. Because God has choose, uh, 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 what do you call it? Hypocrisy. He has choose double standards. And he will spew any person is of his double standard behavior from his mouth. That's how serious the matter is. But thank God that uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.18 is telling us that there is a ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, if we came to Christ and we were backslidden, the ministry is still at work to reconcile us with God. But like I've been telling you all the time, my greatest fear is that the day that you engage in what other people engage in, that may be your last day on earth. There is a movie, it's actually a true, a true, a true life uh, story of a pastor. The title is called The Lazarus Phenomenon the Lazarus phenomenon. While I was fellowshipping in South Africa, every Christmas, the pastor will show us in the church so that we amend our ways. This was a man of God, a pastor, who was faithful to God, who served God with diligence. But one day, his wife did something and he could not forgive his wife. He was full of bitterness. So I think it was Christmas or Easter. He was driving to his in-laws to give them some gifts uh, as occasion demands. Then he had an accident and died, actually died. He was kept in the mock. He took the prayer and the faith of the wife who said, my husband cannot die. I mean, this is a great miracle. The mortuary people did all that they had to do, cutting and all that prepared him. And then Rehan Bonki came to Nigeria and they took this man there. And by the time they took him there, Jesus has shown him everything about hell and heaven and gave him a second chance. For him, his sentence was clear to him. He did, not, he did not cheat God in any way. He did not dip his hands into the offering or the tithe. He was faithful. But just by the fact that he could not forgive the wife, that was his ticket to hell. And so it is not a joke. The issue of preparing for heaven is not a small matter that we sit and we are deceived by so-called men and women of God, some of them leading mega churches who have signed contracts with the devil to bring souls to hell. 
and are busily preaching that because Jesus died on the cross, there is nothing like sin, and you can never go to hell if you sin. Hey, are we making a mockery of the man who left his seats, who left his kinship, his authority, who left his, his majesty and came down here to die for us? Are we making a mockery of it? And I want to tell you how serious this message is. Since I started with covenant, went to Reverend Kofi Church to do an uh, altar on fire on Friday and Sunday and started this. If people know the attacks that have come on me, you will not take your salvation for granted. I'm on Facebook now and I'm saying it without fear. But if people know the attacks, some I have seen, some I have not seen, that have come my way within the last one month, we will stop playing with our salvation. We will stop thinking hell is a fairy tale and see the need, the urgent need to leave everything behind. The first day we, we started with this topic of covenant after service i was closing my laptop and out of from nowhere the screen just cracked now i can't even find one last week my phone just went off from saturday to sunday just like that these are minor ones the ones that have come to me as a person but i won't stop it because one day one day, one day, it will be a joy if somebody gives me a hug in heaven and says, I am here because of one way God gives through you. And I believe you are not taking this for granted. So I share I such messages with passion. Because when God gives me such deep messages, sometimes I think I will lay down and not wake up. And if I don't wake up, I'll look at God with a smile and say, Father, I did what you sent me to do. Rita. Rita. Also, for, I have this song on my heart. Uh, Trumpets will be blown, Jesus will be there, smiling at enemies when we meet on that day. Trumpets will be blown, and Jesus will be there, smiling at enemies when we meet on that day. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? When we meet on that day, are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? When we meet on that day, Amen. Hmm. God bless you so much, sister. God bless you. Please, somebody take us to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. All people don't have their Bibles with them. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 17. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. Amen. 24. And that you put on the new man, 
which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Amen. So that is the mark. Somebody would tell you, maybe I'm quite sorry we saw no more dressing. Nti a mom was or be at a dear teacher, no, a piety who be a stray. A be monofu, they are okay. A mem and a boy, a gugu or mutum, mem or my own bread loss, or much as my day, or my own mutim we pay me, a bleach or winning, or so for come home. It is okay. Queer master by way preby. It is okay. You know the problem here because we have set people as our standard. And when people travel to other parts of the world and they come back, now what they see there becomes the standard for operation in the church. So they become the standard. But you see, the standard according to Ephesians 4.24 is holiness and righteousness. So, so for a free moon, concrum, not so for bear my queen, it is jelly. And she said, Mamma, Mumusum, queer jelly, in patch out. So for mammy. I could see your life be. Now you say, you make up a child, miss my life. Then you told me, eyelashes, that is it, will be our DB to her. And she has a standard that will come from the abandon. The standard is clear righteousness and holiness, modesty. Don't listen to people's imaginations and ways of making salvation so simple and so easy. You have a covenant with God and make sure you go by that covenant that according to Romans 12, chapter one, you have offered yourself, your body, holy, a sacrifice that pleases God. When God called you, he never made a conference call. It was an individual call. So don't let people adulterate what you have with their lifestyle, with their standard. The standard is holiness. The standard is righteousness. And the way to that is putting on the new man. It's a gradual step, but you can make it. It is very funny when people sit with me, when people walk with me for a while and they ask me, I have had people who are not even Christians, who belong to other religions, who will come to me and say, oh, so for, Every time people say that, I smile in my heart because it is only the Holy Spirit that can do that. Only the Holy Spirit. I remember there was a time when my mother told me on phone that amongst all my children, if amongst all my children, if we were to sell, buy patients, I would have found money to buy some for you. But you see, Sandra, I keep muting you, please. But you see, when you put on that new man, the things that make you angry cease to make you angry. The things that push you to sin can no more entice you. 
the beauty of the world does not attract you any longer. No man can attract you to fornicate because your mind is closed from those nonsense. No beauty of a woman, no dressing, no enticement can win your heart to distraction because you are sold out to Christ and you don't want to lose your ticket to heaven. And therefore, 2 Corinthians talks about the new man. Ephesians 4 talks about the new man and gives us the benchmark. The righteous and exhibit holiness. Ephesians 5, 8 asks something. Ephesians 5, 8. Ephesians 5, 8. Yes. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. So, I mean, it becomes so clear. When we did not know Christ, for me, everybody knew. The day I told my mom it's over, she said, no, it can't be. My closest friends didn't believe because alcoholism from a very early age, girls from a very early age, and it became a part of me. It was normal. So nobody believed it could happen. But you know what? The Bible says once we're in darkness, we thought at that time we thought it was fun. At that time we thought that was life. But you know what? The Bible says we were in darkness. We were condemned to hell. But by the spirit and the ministry of reconciliation, we have come into light. And therefore, we should walk in what, people? The Bible says we should walk in what? Are people here with me? Okay, I think I'm alone. As children of light. No. Walk in, in the, the light. light. Okay. If you walk in the light. Mm. Amen. So the question is so clear. If a so-called man or woman of God tells you that so far as you have confessed Christ, accepted Christ, there is nothing like sin. You can do anything you want. Please, what are we working in? Light or darkness? Hello? I work in light. light. We, can't, we come to church all right. And we still go to the blue kiosk. We are working in light. Darkness. We come to church all right. But we go and sleep with somebody who is not our husband or our wife. We come to church all right but we are adding figures to get extra money that we have not worked for. That is where they are pushing us now. That if we say there is sin, then it's not true that Jesus came to die for us. Because when he died, he took away every sin. And so there's nothing like sin and there's nothing like hell. But we cannot be in Christ and be walking in darkness. If we do that, we do not belong to him. We belong to the devil. So put on the new man. Walk in righteousness and holiness. Walk in the light. In 1 Corinthians 13, 11, Paul says, When I was a child, I thought like a child. My thinking was like a child. I behaved like a child. I spoke like a child, but now I am grown. 
and I no more do the things of the past. So it, it cannot be true that you come to Christ and still be doing the things you used to do. The view, and just uh, I'm serious here because now the church, there's so much rot in the church. There's so much rot. You have people who sit in church, in, in ministries in the church, and they are fornicating as if their lives belong to them. They are fornicating as if hell is, is no more there. In the church, amongst the leadership and the ordinary members like you and I, things that are happening, the devil is so happy because he knows we are only pretending, but we are walking in darkness and he knows that we are hell bound but that should not be our portion. That should not be our portion. Okay, let's move to the end. Acts 3.19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Anybody there? Acts 3, 19. Yes. Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And um, he says what? Repent therefore and be converted mm -hmm. that Repent. your sins may be blotted and be out. Converted. It's no, it does not end with repentance. Because people take it for granted. And that's why I have uh, uh, I have a challenge with what I've witnessed over the past few years. Because there were times before when you come to church, we take you through teachings. We take you through teachings. And then your heart, with your heart, you accept Christ and decide to walk with him. But now people come to church the first day without interrogating their background, without them saying we want to take Christ because of the message or the prayer or the worship. I feel something within me. I feel it is time. We don't do that. People come and we call them, lift your hands. Let pray, after, pray the sinner's prayer after me. I have a big challenge with that. Because people have come to church just as they are. They have not been introduced to Christ. They lift their hands. Today, I am concerned. I'm not going to the world again. I take you, Christ, as my savior. And, and, and then when they are done, they think that is it. They think that is it. But you see what, how the Bible puts it. The Bible says we have to repent and be converted. And there are times we don't even do follow up on these people. They don't have any encounter. So for them, the conclusion is that because I came in this nature and I've been accepted in this nature, then that is what Christianity is about. So they happily do all the things that they were doing. So we have people in the church who have raised their hands and supposedly giving their lives to Christ, but they have never experienced the Holy Spirit. They have never encountered Christ. For them, the rituals that we go through in church, the religious ceremonies, for them, that is what it is to go to heaven. But it is deeper than that. Many people like that, I'm not judging, but you can cast your eyes around and see. Many people like that, they don't really understand what Christianity is about. They don't really understand what righteousness is about. For them, it is the religious ceremony of coming to church, singing, paying your tithe and all that. And that's how far the church has also pushed people to think that salvation is so cheap and salvation can be attained through religious ceremonies. But I urge us all to go beyond where we are, to step stand be, stand beyond our boundaries and reach out to other people to reconcile them with Christ. We need to repent 
and our ways, our actions and our inactions should prove to the world that we are converted. That one day God will sit up and testify about us as he testified about Job. That have you seen my servant Job? Have you seen my, my daughter Rita? Have you seen Anakusu? Have you seen Lisbeth? Have you seen Ruby? Have you seen Samuel? Have you seen Ivy? They are sinless. They are my children after my own heart. Can God say that about us? Let's end. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. I was condemned to hell. Hell, 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 fire. He took my place and died for me. He took my place and died for me. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. 9 verse, to 11. Verse 9, 9 to 11. Yes, please. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor sexual perverts, nor thieves, nor the greedy, no drunkards, no revilers, no robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. So this needs no explanation, children of God. And these are not exhaustive. There are other sins. You and I know. When we stand before the judgment seat, even our thoughts and intents will be judged. So it's not only this, these are only a list example of people, of characteristics that will not take us to heaven. And therefore in ending, when we come to Christ and we still engage in sin, we need to understand from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, that whatever sin that we commit and do not repent and get converted, we cannot make it to heaven. And mind you, our being here, our profession as Christians is not just to show people who we are, but to register our names in the book of life. There are people who are here on earth who already have their crowns in heaven. And there are people who are here on earth and are already tied to hell because they have a contract with the devil. Wherever you stand now, I pray that you amend, you amend your ways, that you make heaven your agenda, that you start operating with a sense of an agency that once saved cannot be forever saved. But the good news is that the ministry of reconciliation through the blood of Jesus is still working. It's a ministry that works 24 seven. It's a ministry that works from the day you are born to the day you take your last breath. So as long as you live, you have the chance to run back to God and assume a new man who lives in judgment and righteousness. God bless you all so much. And um, in five minutes, if anybody wants to ask a question or add anything, we are not coming back to this topic any moment at this year. So if you have a question or a contribution, quickly put it across so we can pray and close. God bless us all. I was condemned 
to help. If you have a question, please let it come now. If you have something to add, feel free. Okay, nobody has anything to say. Is that it? Hello. Um. Ah, okay, sometimes I think I'm alone. Hi. <laughs> we have discussed a very important topic. So I'm surprised everybody is Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, the the um. Network is in and out, so sometimes it doesn't well, come your to phone is okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. yes, ma I, I just okay. wanted to um, yes, yes, bring out a point. Um, we, 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 we are from all nations, um, all tongues, different tongues, different tribes, different um, cultures continents and all that and yet we still use the same bible and i want to believe that um other people in other cultures in other societies and communities and continents have their own um statutory rules and um cultures and uh, customs that are binding them and so I believe that's why if we, um, like if you come from the northern region and you're gonna get married, it will require of you um, some cows or from the, if you are from the upper east, some cows and all that. If you come to Ashanti region, it's different. They're gonna require a few different things as the dowry. And so, if you go to certain cultures or certain societies, they, the, 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 the men can, can put earrings. That's their culture, that's their custom. Um, the, the, they have some padlock, some, peop some people like the lobbies, they have padlock in their, you know, put on their mouth. And even the people in the Papua New Guinea, they, the men, the men put earrings because that's their custom and their culture. So I wanted us to just have a little bit of um, clari clarification or clarity so that we'll be able to not sometimes um, generalize something that will be too much of a stigma where we would, we would shun some other people whose culture or custom is one or is some way different from ours but because they don't they don't do that that we do we might also maybe let them fall along the way or neglect them or shun them because this has been a little bit of a controversy sometimes when we are discussing um our biblical principles like how we wear our clothing some places they can wear trousers. Other places they cannot wear trousers. And we all know yesterday like this, I, uh, a certain lady who I know sent a picture of um, Buddhist, uh, the dressing of a Buddhist, the dressing of a Muslim, the dressing of um, some particular religious dressings and then put the dressing of a Christian. And this picture of the Christian was all exposing the chest area 
with all those sisters, the sisters that we have in front here showing, and the dress was shot and all that. That we know is not acceptable. But if you go to the Arabs, they have their, 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 their veil covering their head and then their trousers and everything covered up to down. So sometimes I want us to touch a little bit on that too, so that as we all learn, it will not be that we are pointing too much fingers, but we are also accommodating people with where they, they hail from sometimes. Okay. Thank you so much, um, Amalizi. Um, that, that this can start a whole new discussion. Um, but I'm happy you brought in a picture of a Christian. That is not good. And that's why at a point I mentioned modesty because it also brings in the debate of culture versus Christianity. So um, the box you are opening is, a, is, is, is can lead to so many issues, but I, I pray one day we'll have um, wisdom and time to go into such important issues. So all in all, let's remember modesty, and let's remember that, yes, all these people have their cultures, but as I said, um, the standard is clear. It is righteousness, it is holiness. Because sometimes we travel and we import certain cultures and we want to impose it into our Christian setting. That is the danger, but of course, all these dynamics are there that we cannot rubbish. And one day I, I know we'll come to it. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Another person. Yes, Mami Ivy. Good. Good evening. Good evening, okay. Mami Ivy. Today Please we have a Today we started talking about Roman 13, 11 to 14. Okay. And we were talking about the com coming of Jesus Christ. And right. what really I has it has just come into my heart because of what you have also talked about today. I decided mm. to talk about the Roman 13, 11 to 14. Okay. It, sta it states, brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is the hour now for you to awake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than, than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The mm. day is at hand. Let us then throw off the, the work of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in August and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in ri ri rivalry okay. and jealousy, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make on provision for the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I think it has just said exactly what you have talked to us mm. already. So please, you can just go ahead and, <laughs> and yeah. know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for the addition. Yes. Okay. Maybe the last one and then we close. The last person. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please, um, 
I want to ask whether maybe you are in a church, the head pastor is doing one or two things that you see is not holy. Mm -hmm. As we want to talk about the dressing and other makeup things. Yeah. Is it advisable to still be in the church? I say any who I need any things and a visa. I advise I would say Gusuwa, sorry, or you should change the church, run away for your life. Okay. So it's quite tricky. I think it's about <laughs> dressing. Um, well, this is what I would say. When it comes to living or attending a church, it's about listening to God's voice. There are times people go overboard. That one, nobody needs to tell you to leave. And you see that these people have now signed contracts with the enemy and are seeking for souls. But people can operate in error sometimes by mistake or sometimes uh, deliberate without people getting the right people to advise them. On such occasions, it becomes difficult because I've also thought of leaving a church before where God told me, don't stay there. And I had to stay because there were things that I didn't like, but they were not, um, let me say, um, they are not actually deviated from um, salvation, but other things were happening that I did not like. So you have to look at all that. So that's why the last time I told you, for example, if you have people who are telling you there's nothing like sin, there's nothing like hell, that one, don't wait. Don't wait. But um, as I'm saying, for dressing and stuff, there are issues we have to go to God and and and, and. unless it is very I don't know that the, the, the gravity of what you are saying is, is is the pastor a female a male is it that propagative well, Auntie Lizzie was saying that everything was showing and it, it keeps it, it keeps happening not that once or twice it was a mistake but that has become the fashion then you really need to pray and advise yourself Rita has written here work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and I'm also being careful here because I'm wondering if there's any church that we do and we will have everything 100% that we don't have any cause to be angry or think of living for even a day. That's why I'm being a bit careful with my answer. So let's look at uh, the gravity of what is happening and if it is something reconciliable or not then we, we see or as much as possible, um, leave it to prayer for God to direct us. I have experienced it. God says, don't leave. And I have to stay there. Sometimes he will tell you to leave immediately. Okay. So with that said, you we'll pray and close. So for Mama Rebecca, Hello, Baba. Oh. Uh, we are just about closing. We finished the session on one seed, forever seed, as, as a falsehood. So we have yeah. just finished and had a few questions. So, my benediction, Nyambon. But, Nyambon. Oh, sorry to be no Eritrea so bonte Amparania no be no qua Nia no qua Nia Oh, sorry to me, 
Amen. God bless you so much, Mommy. Mm -hmm. Facebook family, God bless you. Let me stop. <laughs>